first uh, thing to say open regionalism is, has no precise or definitive meaning. It, it, it means several different things to several different people or agencies, agencies, but there is a common thread which is essentially uh, trying to differentiate the regionalism that began taking place in several parts of the region of the world in the late, from the late ages, early 90s, from the sort of regionalism that prevailed uh, previously. In what sense? In the sense that regionalism historically in Asia, in Latin America for sure, my own region, uh, used to be embedded in, uh, under the framework or within the framework of in, industrialization by import substitution. So regionalism was to some extent seen as opposed to integration with the rest of the world. You integrated with your neighbors, but then you closed your borders to the rest of the world. Whereas the sort of regionalism that began emerging in the early 90s uh, was of a different type. You definitely integrated with your with your neighbors, you removed barriers to trading goods, services, displacement of workers, uh, foreign capital, etc. But at the same time, you were removing your own barriers to trade and investment with the rest of the world. And that was an, an essential uh, change. So in, in our particular case, I, 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 I represent uh, ECLAC, the uh, United Economic Commission for Latin America and, and the Caribbean. Uh, we, we see. Um, we have characterized open regionalism as building regional strength, strength to compete globally. That is, exploit all the advantages of the regional market, which in the Latin American case is very intensive in manufacturing exports, is very important market for our small and medium enterprises. It's a very important market for Latin American firms investing abroad, most of of them invest essentially in the Latin American market, etc. So, reaping all those benefits that the regional market provides, uh, and on the basis of that, build regional value chains, uh, in increase uh, productive integration among countries, and on the basis of that, strengthen your capacities as a country and as a region to further explore extra regional country uh, markets that may be more more demanding so essentially it's 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 a pros it's the two processes are complementary you through regional integration you build economic strengths and then that those economic strengths you you can use to um, more effectively engage with the third markets well it's been so far a, a terrific experience uh, uh, the whole concept of bringing uh, for three four days i mean a, a group of uh, students, practitioners, academics, uh, to have intensive di and focused uh, discussions on, on one particular topic of, uh, of relevance is, is, is very welcome and, and that is something we don't really have that opportunity very, very often. So uh, it, I understand the, the Academy promotes dialogues uh, such as this one I'm participating in on, on, a, on a regular basis and on, on different topics of uh, of, uh, of regional relevance, and I, I, again, I, I think that that is a very welcome thing because normally when you're in policy making, you don't really have that, that much opportunity to step back and uh, step back from, from everyday business and have two, three days to, to discuss views with your partners and with, with your peers, uh, with people in academia. Uh, that enriches you a lot, not, not just the the academy, but it, it, it enriches us as well as, 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 as practitioners.